Hello and welcome to the Prom 9. Since we're restoring this husky, we might as well go into a detailed overview of all the components. This is just a plastic spacer to protect the display from the board getting crushed. So, if we position the camera correctly, most people would do this in editing or something. Or that gets the board in. Tripod's stable, we're all good to go. Light on the board is good. All data is up on the monitors behind. So these two here are EEPROMs. As we all know, both giving 256 bits each. If we divide that by 8, we get their data rate in 256. Divide 8, not 2, bugger. Two, five, six, divide eight equals. They're both 32 kilobytes, so it's got a total of 32 kilobytes, 64 kilobytes ROM installed, and of course we've got a revision of up to six ROM chips. So there's a fair amount of software you can put in ROM on these things. Here we just have the battery tube, nothing special. The NSC 800N is I think the 41 no that wouldn't be megahertz would it but anyway this is the essentially a low power version of the Z80 CPU hence this thing can run the CPM operating system this chip here is just its IO chip and this is its main crystal oscillator which looks like it's clocked at 8 megahertz so the Husky Hunter runs at around 8 megahertz and of course due to it being a battery powered device it will have <coughs> methods that if you watch the EV blog you've seen where it's taken a scope of one of these running and it's like burst of clock speed clock frequencies every so every few milliseconds you get a burst of clock and it only engages fully when it needs to now this huge section of chips here is the RAM. You can also have RAM installed along here and then it goes as a board which fits above all this and covers up the ROMs and CPU and that. This is static RAM and I've got the data sheet up here. Have we got anything that tells us the sort of memory capacity? Yes I should have read this up before but I didn't. Um. No, so the exact memory is not known of the RAM, but I can tell you the memory of the device in total in RAM, and that would be 144 kilobytes. So, how do we work out the rough average of all these chips? We count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10... 15, 16, 17, 18, so 144 divide 18, 144, clear that, 144 divide 18 equals about 8 kilobytes per chip. It's gone what the 70s calc says, probably blurred it, no I didn't, thank god. <laughs> The next stage that we're going to look at is we're pretty much off the major chips. I'm unable to identify that one because I can't get that stupid sticky stuff off. This little chip here is a voltage inverter, regulator device, probably to do with this little inverter unit round here. Not quite sure why that's there. We've got the display here with all the display logic chips. And of course a little power supply transistor which is... There! You can see, you can see one of them display chips too and of course then we're down to these the 138 they are if I remember correctly 138s and 139s are multiplexers and they will obviously be used for addressing the RAM there we go 3 to 8 line decoder multiplexer inverting 
and the 139s pretty much the same thing dual to four line decoder multiplexer two to four line and there that's one that's an it multiplexer that's a multiplexer that is just a not gate chip there's about six of them in total in that particular unit this is a 74HC32 and I have researched these that is a quad input two input OR gate so this has four little OR gates in it which all take four in two inputs each we have some more multiplexers along here and then we have another uh, quad input OR gate chip then we have a 174 which is if you just bear with me let the computer load it a hex D type flip flop with positive edge trigger so basically it's a flip flop I don't fully understand exactly positive edge trigger I understand but I don't understand the hex D type so that is a flip flop chip so is the 74HC74 they are JK flip flops I know that because I've got them in a kit same with this chip here then we move off those we come to a 245 which is basically a non inverting buffer like an amplifier -y type thing a 743 373 which is a octal D type transparent latch free state don't ask me what the hell that means I'm afraid that will be for you to research to find that out because the data sheet for it currently is not available because the website's having issues so I can't even get a rough idea of how that one's going for a while then we move on to over here 74HC133 which is come on where are you 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 don't you just love it when you can't find the chips you want um <laughs> I may have done a boo boo and not re typed this one in, so your guess is as good, good as mine. Then we've got 74, uh, we've done that. 7404, that's another inverter not gate chip. This one is basically a quad to dual input amplifier. I'd imagine in this package it'd be a quad. Then we've got a 74HC08, another inverter chip. Then we've got a 74139, which I believe is another multiplexer, and that it is. A, this is another SRAM chip. Don't know why there's another SRAM chip up here, but you've also got the clock crystal up here, so somewhere in this area it's going to be a clock generator and I believe I know which chip it is it's this one the MM58174AN and if we go to that one which is MM no it's not um, that's the one I couldn't find anything on uh, CD4 that is the 8 bit addressable latch you can see I'll plan this and that is a that's one two nine one seven four that's what we want one seven four that's the one I was looking for hex D type for the note Ah, which one is it? Uh, hang on, let me just browse through them and find it. Da -da. Here we go, 193. It's a presetable synchronous 4-bit binary up-down counter. I reckon that has something to do with the clock here. 
so we've got just over a minute left so what does some of this stuff do to be honest well that the multiplexers will be for addressing the RAM I reckon that's for the clock to do the clock which is here we've got a little power supply section here which provides the necessary power to various functions we've got clock oscillator circuit here which then goes into the main microprocessor and the rest is just like well generic logic which does generic things it doesn't do anything special but you can do some pretty cool stuff with just some of these logic chips on their own <coughs> sorry about that and yeah that's a little overview of the actual circuitry of the Husky and for those of you who want to reverse engineer it it is a triple layer board and, and before it runs out that's the back